بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد So today inshallah we are going to continue with our uh, study of uh, Surah Al-Kahf We will go over verses uh, 4 to verses uh, 9 4 to 9 inshallah We are talking about the purpose of the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the previous verses He says the purpose of the Quran is to give glad tidings to those who believe And to who do good deeds That they will stay in a reward that is forever Meaning Jannah And its purpose is also to ward of a severe punishment For those who reject And those who go against this uh, uh, this book and the message right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues f- Speaking about 5 verses about false those who claim uh, uh, um, false gods beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verse number four, The purpose of this Qur'an is to warn those who have taken a child, who have, who have said that they, Allah has taken a child. Verse number five, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They have no knowledge of this, nor do their parents, nor do their forefathers. كَبُرَتْ كَلِمَةً تَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ This is a very big, human, monstrous lie that is coming out of their mouths. Monstrous statement that is coming out of their mouths. إِنْ يَقُولُونَ إِلَّا كَذِبًا It is only a lie what they are saying. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is addressing the Quraysh specifically. Right? So the Quran is there to warn those who reject, but specifically to warn those who say Allah has taken a child. Right? And the people of Mecca at that time, they used to claim that the daughters are the angels of or are, are the angels of the daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses this that the, one of the purposes of the Quran is to right the wrong that they have committed you know when you ask someone why they are doing something one of the biggest excuses they will give is that we saw our parents doing the same or this is what we were taught so or everyone else is doing it and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they have no knowledge of this nor do their forefathers because their claim was we are only doing what we were taught to do or we were only doing what everyone else is doing right this 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 mindset that we just follow everyone else right without thinking for ourselves is a very dangerous mindset Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this multiple times in the Quran just because you know we do something because others are doing it it is not a valid excuse in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know our scholars, this is a side note, when it comes to the issue of aqidah, right? We, we have this concept that every person must believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on their own free will. If you believe in Allah because your parents told you to, or you believe in Allah because everyone around you, your friends did it, because, and that's why you did it also, this is a very dangerous uh, territory, right? Imagine, the scholars give this example, they say, imagine a person comes before Allah on the day of judgment, and he goes before Allah, and he is a Hindu, and he is worshipping idols, right? And multiple gods. And he stands before Allah and he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks him, why didn't you worship me? And he goes, my parents told me to, that's why I didn't do it. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would dust him to hellfire. And the next person comes up and he believes in Allah and Allah asks him, why did you worship me? And he says the exact same answer, my parents told me to. It would be an injustice upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is free from any injustice that he punished one and he pu- doesn't punish the other, reward the other, even though they give the exact same answer. Right? This is a, this is something that our scholars say, you have to have iman on your own. Right? You have to have iman on your own. So this concept of everyone else is doing it, or your parents taught us, or this is the way we learned, right? And that's why we're going to do it this way without any thinking, is a very dangerous thought. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alludes to this. They have no knowledge of this, of their claim, nor do their parents, because they said that their parents do, right? Their forefathers do. This is a very dangerous, monstrous word statement that comes out of their mouth, right? It's not a small statement, right? And our scholars mention here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, all they are doing is saying a lie, right? Our scholars tell us from the deduction of logic, from this ayah, we can tell the truth is one, the false is many. The truth is one, and the false is, is many. Anytime you deviate from the truth, you are going into falsehood. Anytime you turn away from the truth, there is only one truth, and that is the Quran. There is no other truth, right? So, they are saying anything that they say about Allah beside the Quran is a lie, right? Verse number six. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet of Allah, فَلَعَلَّكَ Maybe, بَاخِعُ nafsaka. 
Bakhi means to destroy yourself. Muhlikun nafsahu bil huzan. To destroy yourself because of anxiety and depression and worry. Fala'allaka bakhi al nafsaka ala atharihim illam yu'minu bihadha al hadith asafa. Verse number six, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Prophet of Allah, maybe you will destroy yourself that you are running after them so that be, uh, out of regret that they are not believing in this. Illam yu'minu that they have not believed bihadha al hadith in this message. Right? You are, you are going to destroy yourself because of the worry that you have that you, you want them to believe and they are not believing in you right and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now addressing our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa concern his worry for the ummah was so much he would spend all night worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and begging Allah for, for forgiveness for people Allahumma ghfir li qawmi fi innahum la ya'lamun oh Allah forgive my people they do not know right we know the story of Ta'if when the angel came and said all you have to do is just say one word and we will turn the mountain upside down and we will destroy the people of Ta'if and what did our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? He said, he said, Oh Allah, forgive my people. They did not know. They did not know that they are rejecting a Prophet. They did not know the crime that they are committing by rejecting a, 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 a Prophet that is punishable by the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would spend all night making dua for his ummah. Right? He would spend all night making dua for us, for, bo for, for, for you and I. And this is the, the concern he had for the people of, of Mecca, right? And the people of, of, of the Quraysh. You know, when this verse was revealed, the Quraysh would say, you know, look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? He would run so much after, he's worried so much about us. But if you study the verses, right? Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala first talks about the crime of the people of Quraysh. That they believed in another god or other gods beside Allah. They took other gods and they claimed Allah as a child. Na'udhu Billah. And now Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, instead of talking about their crime, He says, O Prophet of Allah, you don't worry. So this is the comfort that he gives to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the honor that he gives to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then Allah subhanahu wa taala continues, verse number seven and verse number eight. Indeed, inna jalna ma al ard zina talha li nabluhum ayyuhum ahsan wa amala. Indeed, we have made this earth a test, a beauty for them. So why? So we can test who will do the best deeds, right? Allah subhanahu wa taala is reminding us the purpose of this world is not to become rich and powerful. One of the things that the Quraysh used to think when they heard these verses was that look, the, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is consoling the Prophet, right? And, 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 and he's making the Prophet look down. This is the first thing. The second thing they would think to ourselves, look, we have so much wealth. We have so much in this world, right? This is a, the concept that just because you have so much, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, right? This is a very infallible argument. Meaning that this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives to whoever he wants and he gives to whoever he doesn't want. Today, our Imam read this. مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَرْجُونَ وَإِن تَكُونُوا تَأْلَمُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ يَأْلَمُونَ كَمَا تَأْلَمُونَ Right? That if you are suffering pain, they are also suffering pain. This is meaning that Pain goes to everyone. It goes to Muslim and non-Muslim. Suffering goes to Muslim and non-Muslim, right? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds the Quraysh in this. He says, Inna ja'alna ma al ard zinatan laha. Right? Don't think that just because you have wealth in this world, it means Allah is happy with you. It means you made it in life. No. Right? The purpose of this life is a test. We are going to test you. أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا أَيُّهُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا That we are going to test you of who will do the best deeds. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّا لَجَاعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا سَعِيدًا جُرُزًا And just like this world, we have made it beautiful, we, could all, we will also make it a barren desert again. right? And this is in reference to the Day of Judgment. Because the Day of Judgment, this whole world will become a barren desert. It will become a flat land. right? In Surah Naba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this. He says the mountains will become flat. Right? And the world will become flat. بِالسَّاهِرَةِ And everyone will be on the plains of Sahira. Everyone will be standing before Allah in, the, in, the, in, in, one, in one valley. And that is the reality of this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it to some and He gives it to others. Right? Some is more than others. But that's the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not mean that Allah is happy with us. Rather, it means Allah is testing us even more. More sometimes so the more we have the more tests we have, right? وَإِنَّا لَجَاعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا صَعِيدًا جُرُزًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we made this world a beauty and we will turn it back into a barren desert. We are the ones in control of this. Of, of this. Nothing is in this world is permanent. Everything is temporary. No matter how great the mountain is, it will also be temporary. Even this earth is temporary. Everything in this earth is temporary. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of this and reminding the Quraysh of this. Do not think that just because you have so much, you are on the winning side of this argument. Right? Because the Prophet sallallahu is here to preach to you and he cares about you. It doesn't mean that you have the upper hand. Right? Many times we have this mentality that just because I have more, it means that Allah is happy with me. Right? Or Allah subhanahu uh, maybe I'm right in this issue. Right? And so we, we look down upon others because we have more. Or sometimes we look down upon others for any reason whatsoever. 
right? And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the Quraysh of and reminding us as well that everything in this world is a test from Allah and everything will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And then in verse number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the first story. Did you think that the people of the cave and the people of Raqim, right? They were amongst, do, do, do you not know that they are amongst our amazing signs? They were amongst our signs, our amazing signs, right? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the first eight, nine ayahs of this uh, surah and he, he makes it a preamble, introduction to this surah. What is this surah about? It's about protecting your iman by sticking to the Qur'an. It's about understanding what the purpose of the Qur'an is, how to extract benefits from the Qur'an. Use it as a rewarding for yourself. Use it as good motivation for yourself to do good deeds so you aim for the highest, the reward that never ends. Right? And do not be like those who, who claim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken, taken a son or has taken a child. And remember, just because everyone else does it, it doesn't mean that that argument holds up in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, if you tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I did something because someone else is doing it, that is a punishable offense by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish us for that. Because that's not a valid excuse for belief and it's not a valid excuse for disbelief and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will go into the story of the people of the cave, which is a very, very common, very common, very famous story. Many of us may have heard the story, but inshallah, we will go through it briefly inshallah and we'll try to extra extrapolate some benefits starting from tomorrow.